What's going on, guys? And welcome back to the Edison Club podcast. I'm your host, Mike, joined tonight by special guest Sasha Egger. And this week is kind of a bonus episode. Uh, We're going to go back to a couple weeks ago to the events that took place in Raleigh at the Big Boy Gaming events. And we're going to get everything from Sasha's perspective. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's, uh, Let's just start on Friday with YCS Johnson. Okay, yeah, so it was pretty cool. Um, I heard about it uh, from a couple weeks before. I wanted to make sure and go because a bunch of people were... What do you think there was, like 20-something people there, maybe? Yeah, maybe even... Maybe more. There were... Like the, it was a full house. Yeah, and it was just really chill, and Josh I did a good job of like setting up the event, and it was really fun. Um... And I, I was playing Hero Frogs uh, because I didn't... It was a very stupid reason, because I didn't... My theory was, if I play a different deck, I and I cut... Because he had banned Trap Dust Shoot from the event. Yeah, no Trap so Dust Shoot. I basically just play Hero Frogs with Water Art in the main deck instead of Dust Shoot. I was like, I could have played like yeah. another deck Debbie or something, but... And that actually yeah. turned out to be really good because basically, like, you were able to just play against whoever, and you wager a different amount of chips that you that you were given if for being part of it, and it was free, which was cool. And um, yeah, I actually lost my first round against Diva Hero against Sean, and then I I went six and zero after that, and Water Art really came up big. Uh, I had a game three against Black Wings where he. I, he like attacked the Shura, and I like played Water Arc because I was gonna discard his Kalut. But he had Dark Arm and Brain Control, and I discarded Dark Arm, and then I could play around Brain Control the whole rest of the game because I knew he had it. Very nice. And I, I opened it in the finals against uh, Vayu, so that was really good. And that game one involved me having to one for one a Battle <laughs> Theater. That was just crazy. a Black Rose with Junk Synchron, like a Dark Arm, and like three Vayu Synchros. So that was like a really fun. Yeah, that, was that cool. play was really crazy. When I saw you play one for one, I was like, I'm pretty sure there's no targets left. And then I saw Fader and I was like, oh, it's one of those games. <laughs> yeah, because like theoretically you could like one for one crow or one for one fader and then bounce it with Swap Frog. Like I've seen I've seen people do that before, but Oh yeah, that is pretty like, crazy. That is not like a great thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was it was ideal. cool. It was fun. Um I was excited for the events on Saturday and Sunday. I decided to play Vayu Saturday, and I was messaging my friend Adam, like, what different things we're going to do. And we usually play, like, double oppression, but that's because, like, it's so good against basically all the other non black and Vayu decks. But we just decided to play two Deck Devi instead of two oppression, and that was, like, really good because Deck Devi is just better against Black Wings because you can just hit Clue and Blizzard, and it's yeah. better against Vayu. And it's still good against, like, basically everything. Like, it's not that good against, like, Machina, probably. But, or, it, the deck is really not good against, I think, is Amaryllis, but not, there weren't that many Amaryllis players there. Yeah, the deck's, I haven't really seen that deck being played in quite some time now. Yeah, so I felt pretty confident, like, I usually, I'm not, like, as comfortable with Vayu and, like, playing it as Frogs, but I know, like, I feel like I had a general sense, and I got sort of lucky, I'd say, because I didn't play against any Hero Frogs in my eight rounds that I played, which is just lucky, because if you play Vayu and you go against Hero Frogs and you lose a dice roll, it is really hard to win game one unless you absolutely sack them. Like, you you are just so... You need to draw, like, Burial Dark Armor, or, like, Win of Return or something, because your flips are just so useless if they just open Treeborn Frog. Yeah, and yeah, like, turn on all the monarchs. And a, good, and a good frog player will not attack a set monster with swap frog, and they'll make you either flip the Raiko just to mill or just let it get Caius on the following turn. So yeah. that's like... Yeah, so um, I I was 6-1 in Swiss on Saturday, and my only loss was in the mirror in time in round three. And I played against... Um, Two black wings, uh, one fairy, one macro guy. Yeah. One crazy oh boy. Macro yeah. Guy. Yeah. We could talk about the macro guy uh, if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. And um, I did lose in top eight 
but I lost to AJJ, who's like a very good player, and he also drew extreme. He drew like really well. Like he went first and he dust shooted me, and then he had decked Evie. And my opening hand was hamster, dark arm, plague spreader, burial, rota, allure. Oh wow! And yeah. Like, if I go first there, or I just don't get dust shooted. And the thing is, I had a chance to win, and he had a really very good play where he very nice play where he like faked out. He bluffed me on Kalut when he attacked my armor master with Shura with one card in hand, and if he if he doesn't have if he has a clue, I just lose because my set is deck heavy, so he just attacks over, he summons a guy and kills me. So I had to use Necro Gardena, but he actually didn't draw clue until the following turn. Oh so, wow, yeah, uh, that's crazy. And then game two, he used a crow to hit for to be his third dark for dark armed. Mm. So I think I have game on the next turn because I have Bring Control and Armageddon Knight, so I'm gonna send Bayou and then I'm gonna use the Bayou effect. But he had the second crow, so I, my brain control play was not enough for game, and that's wow. that was just unfortunate. Yeah, see, like I'm the kind of person my luck would be bad enough. Like I've always wanted to try to do things like that, like Jane into an armed wing while they have Gardna and make them waste it. But my luck is so bad they'd be like, okay. The bad situation was different though because I literally just lose if it's Kalu. Like it's like not like it's just I'm just I just lose. Oh on yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, guess that like, makes I sense. So, like, people, and they all they all said like they would have done the same thing. Like, you have to necker there because if I draw Caius or something, I just win. Like, I have a lot of odds that are that are just game if I draw them. Yeah, yeah. But so I guess bad. like if my opponent's at fifteen hundred and I'm Lila into an armed wing, then they kind of have to they kind of have to do it there, I guess. Yeah, but it's yeah. also like he's just he's just a really good go player, and he's probably done like what, things like that, like more and yeah, and go. Because that's yeah. like you can do like sort of stupid stuff and go where you like you like slow roll graceful or you like there's different like stuff with solemn where you can like bait stuff out. It's, it just was I don't know. I, I, I wish I had gone farther, but honestly, if I had won, I probably would have lost Yi Chang in top four because his his deck is very good against Vayu. Yeah, and he beat like every single Vayu player he played against the entire Saturday. So. Yeah, Machina naturally being that. good on top of like him just playing stuff like Fiend's Chain. Yeah, Fiend's Chain's kind of crazy against Greffer. It's just a, it's just a, um, yeah, yeah, and like yeah, against yeah. Dark Armed. Yeah. Uh, so crazy. Like, what's even crazier for, is the fact that people are now yeah. playing that deck with Fiend's Chain. It's still a bad idea. I mean, the only reason he did it in the first place is just because I said it was a bad idea, and then he went. On <laughs> he was going to prove you wrong. Yeah, because he was like, like we were we were at a tournament, and we were at a tournament that he ended up going undefeated, and we were both like two or three zero. He just like, he just like he's like siding him two games. He's like, look at this terrible card that I'm playing today, and it shows me like three finish <laughs> chance. <laughs> he got like people were just like using Brionic or Lumino with priority, just like. Because the thing is, his theory of using it is smart, though, because it's just like, I want to protect my flips when I go second from Caius or Hamps or, or, or Ryko. Yeah. So if that's your main goal, and it's not like, like, you're not using it, he just said, like, it's, it's like, okay, and that's fine. Like, it's not, like, great, but it's not, like, yeah. horrible. Yeah. It's such a good feeling. I haven't experienced it with Fiendish Chain, but. When I would play Christia Sworn and people would summon Brionic and go like pitch four and you just hit them with orange light. Man, that was so it's crazy. Like you always do it one at a time. It's like it's like the simplest thing. It's like, yeah, you just unless it's like you absolutely have to hit multiple synchros. Yeah, like and even against against like um Christia Sworn, it's not like you're really fearing bottomless that much, you know. Yeah. So you can most of the time just do them one at a time and still be fine. Yeah, Brionic is is the stupidest synchro. The, the ability to just like, like if Brionic didn't exist, I don't think Dragon Turbo would be actually a real deck. The reason it's is because it's so easy to get to it that you can do stuff with Rejuve and also clear their entire field. Yeah, Brionic like, being you, level six is crazy. Brionic Red MD Blue Eyes is eighty one hundred. That's like on you can do that on turn one sometimes. Yeah. How uh, how much do you think it would change if Brionic was like level seven instead of six? It would change it a lot, but I think like if it was that, then people more people would play like teleport with like psychic commander, like in zombies and stuff. Yeah, 
But, um, yeah, Brianna being a level 6 is just... I don't, yeah, it, it's just, like, so, it's way too good of a card. Yeah. It's just we by were... far, like, the scariest... Like, think about it just in Blackwings. Like, there's so many games that just end. There's just, like, summon Blizzard, search Vayu, make a level 6, make Brionic, discard Vayu, special yeah. armbang, that's game, is 4,600. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, recently we were looking at hat format decks. Somebody was like, bro, why does no one play Blackwings? The deck is full power. It has three Kalu. It has three Whirlwind. And I was like, you know what? You're kind of right. So I'm looking and I'm like, oh. Because yeah, Blizzard, no Gorla, Blizzard no doesn't do anything. It just summons. Yeah, you can't. Guy yeah, Knight. You just have this wing. <laughs> yeah, like it has all the Blackwing cards at three, but it doesn't have the cards that made the deck good. Yeah, yeah. I I don't feel bad about losing how I did. I also just like Yiching also lost to him in top four, and he was drawing really well against him also. But yeah. I, yeah. I'm happy for Mitchell for winning. It was cool that he won both days. That was pretty cool. That was really cool. Um, yeah, I talked his, to Mitchell. His version of Dragon Turbo, his new version is really good. Yeah, um, I talked to him on Friday. I'm sorry, on Saturday. I was like, you playing the, uh, the Christia Sworn today? And he was like, no, not today. And I was like, okay, well, he's either playing Black Wings, which he's played a little from time to time, or he went back to Turbo. He beat me a few times with Black Wings. But I didn't expect him to play Turbo without Upstart Goblin. Yeah, well, the thing is, you just put in Prime Material, Mirror First, and Torrential in those spots. And the thing is, Upstart sometimes does make it harder for you to go for game. Yeah. And it is, like, another thing with, if you play, like, more dragons, like Prime Material, you're, if you draw Future Fusion a little bit later, you can still use it. And that's, like, a really weird thing where if you draw Future Fusion, especially in games 2 and 3, and you have to send, like, multiple red MDs, if your Avarice gets crowed, you just lose. Like, there's no possible way you can win now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I've I've been playing it a bit online because also like in the side deck, like because I know like Pro Storm used like a so somewhat similar list in online tournament that I saw, where he was siding like he was side decking like Skill Drain, D Prison, Trap Stun, Bottomless, like the most random traps in Dragon Turbo I've ever seen. Yeah, I think like he I think he like lost to Fraser who like beat him with Lad in game three, in like top sixteen or something. But it was interesting because I think. Mitchell just changed like one or two cards from that list in the main deck, at least. Yeah, can confirm that deck was really crazy because I had to play him on Sunday and I could do nothing but just sit back and watch. <laughs> that was all that I could do. Yeah, because the deck is not as inconsistent as people say it is. I think it's just. I think the what people find frustrating is like. The hand like. It is a lot of skill in terms of, like, when to use that Reckless, like, when... And this is more true games 2 and 3, especially if you're, like, siding in Oppression against, like, with Dragon Turbo. Like, if you just make, like, a Red MD Blue Eyes with, like, a set of Oppression, like, how are they getting rid of that? Like, yeah. how, what, what, are, what, are, what is someone going to do if they don't have Lightning Vortex? Yeah. Like, that's extremely yeah, hard to deal with for any deck. Yeah, when, uh, when we played, I only lived another turn because I had Tragodia which got bounced back to my hand with Brionic. And I had a really weird hand where like all of my cards were reactive. I had nothing to actually like play yeah. for like two turns. So because yeah, the games that Dragon Turbo loses that like you either like deck Debbie them, you have oppression, they brick really bad so you can just beat them down. But what, the thing is, is now like manning Mirror Force and Torrential, it's much harder to do that because if you just go like, I was watching one of um, Frazier's tournaments when, when Mitchell won, and he was playing against Cormac in the finals, and Cormac just summoned four monsters into Mirror Force game one, and he just lost on the spot. Yeah. And he's like, a, like a, obviously, he's a great player, and he's smart. He just didn't even think of that as a possibility. Yeah, and the thing about it, too, is, is like, it can be hard at times, because if you, if you don't go all in, they may just draw yeah. one card and turn their whole yeah, deck on anyway. Of the time, uh, most of the time, Void, the, the, they're signing it in after game one, Every single time, because you need stuff against Vanities, Thunder yeah. King, Dinah, whatever random thing. Like, it, it is also just like you. It's just you need to have it. it it's basically like it's kind of like the same sort of thing in Frogs, where Frogs didn't used to main it as much, and they just sided it in. Yeah, I, it, it's just like also Torrential is just good with like Whitestone. You can go like Torrential Whitestone and then get your search or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's very true.
Yeah, yeah I just think it is a super scary. It is a horrible deck to play against because you really have no control over. Like you have some amount of control if they draw like kind of okay, but if yeah. they draw the right combination, there's nothing that you can do to stop it. No, no, I uh, I saw that <laughs> firsthand. I've been lucky and I've never actually had to play against that deck in like a high stakes tournament before. That was the first time. Yeah, I haven't played against it that much. Like besides that Maryland tournament where I played against that guy, Katz, who was there with his team on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Um. Uh, and I beat. I was able to beat him. But one of those games, I was just like lucky because he was like kind of tired and he didn't avarice his red MDs. But it didn't even uh, really matter for him because he was five zero and I was four one, so he was going to top anyway. Yeah, that's true. So I was able to. I was able to deck him out with a real armor master, and I, it was really funny because I thought like. Oh, he's just playing Mitchell's list. There's no possible way he can out it. And then he just like tribute summon for Gores and then made Dark End with with a white stone to, oh, to, to pop. Yeah. Him. But I like had Decker Gardner. But yeah, I think I played against Mitchell like once playing zombies, but I think he just bricked both games. But that was another thing where we were both like that was that like BBG and we were both like gonna top, so it didn't really matter. Yeah. I played against it one time. Um this has been a while ago at Easy Gaming when they had a PS5 tournament. I played against Newberry and he looked at his hand and he was like, this upstart has to get me there. And I'm looking at my hand. I have two orange lights and two fairies. So I'm like, I'm good. You know, upstarts into card destruction. Oh my God. No. And then yeah. I, I lost because of it. Yeah. I think card destruction is more broken in the deck than Future Fusion. Honestly, because, it really is. Like, like I had a game against against Prescott like last year where he card structured me twice on turn one and he drew like thirty five cards. In that match I had four turns over three games total. Wow. And I like That's won so one crazy. of the games because he card destructioned me and I had drew like Chaos Sorcerer Burial when I had like Vayu and like a and like a light. And then like a Raikou, so I and it was game one, so he didn't have any defense. And then game three, he like got me really bad because he like played True Nade. I had like an arm wing uh Greffer on the field. I had like a set Solomon set torrential. And he had gores. So I like Solomon because I thought he was gonna kill me. And then he just vortex me for game and he had triple blue eyes in hand, so he completely oh, wow. got me there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely glad that's not one of the more popular strategies anymore. Um I can say I've been having this it's really hard time. Best, yeah. What's that? Like it is like I think it is like one of the five or six best decks. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just it is just good that more people don't play it because it's just so it's just not fun. It's not like an actual interactive game some of the time. Yeah. Like yeah. if you just draw rejuve. That's another thing that's like really stupid, is like you can draw like a crazy dragon turtle hand, but if you don't draw rejuve like during the turn that you discard like a bunch of stuff, you just don't you don't progress like any further. It's just like it's just like a giant stop sign. Yeah, you just that's stuck. what runs Yeah, for sure. Do you uh, want to tell us a little bit about Sunday? So Sunday was the three v three tournament. Yeah. So Sunday, um, my team that uh, I played with before, Yu Ching and Adam, um, we did not have the most success on Sunday. We were, um. I think me and Yichang just were just getting like a lot of like 50-50 stuff and like just variants going against us. Drawing some bad hands. Adam was Adam was over there just like drawing dark on like every game. It's like Adam demolished me. Adam beat me. I was sore his after hand was a really away good from that table. Too. His hand was really good. I mean, there was if you didn't have something like heavy something else. Like he had a game against Cole where he just drew like this is like game three. He draws like Greffer, Dark Armed, Heavy. Deck Devi, and he draws like two rugs for two gear frames or something. Oh, that's so crazy. And he had another game where he like stacked, so he had like two darks and grave. He like stacks dark arm with plague spreader. Caius is a fortress. Caius is his third dark, so he saves the dark arm from being discarded. And then he drops it on the next turn and then kills him with it. That's so insane. Yeah, so we went, we did bad. We also did have to play against the all GB team, which was. Yeah, so, that's. I bet if we played against a, like any of the other teams in the last round, we probably had a better chance. But they all they boy they literally all drew rescue at game one. Oh my one. gosh, 
I yeah. we had to play against them as well, and I really thought there was no way we were winning that round. I mean, yeah, I got like, I mean, we, I Adam and Yijing at least got the game three. I did not. I got I got Dutch did both games against Crank. So mm. yeah, it's um, tough. He also like top deck Test Tiger when I had like a set. So he has like Best Yari and Grave. He's a War Chariot and a Lakari. I just have an Ab Zero, and he just draws Test Tiger to go into Guy's Aris. Pop that zero, chariot it, attack. Like it was just, it was just crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I was happy with how I did on Saturday, and I probably should have just kept playing Vayu because I was not drawing well with frogs. Like I, I was drawing. Like I had a game where I got, I opened Dandelion, Prodigy, Ocean, and Unifrog in a game three, and I like did okay, and then he like draws Stratos, summons it, pops my Mirror Force. Attacks me and then super polys me for game, which I'm like, all right, well, Ooh, yeah. Like yeah. I could have sat in the back row and got heavied, but I mean that's just like I just can't do anything about that. Yeah, we kind of had opposite I mean, I mean, tournament experiences. Chris, he he dust shooted me. I chain right Geki break to discard Treeborn to save it. Then he crows the Treeborn and then he mind crushes me on the following turn. I didn't that's even see like, that. Yeah, so it's game two. He dust shoots me. I chain Regeki Brick on the other, or like one of his other back or something. Yeah. To save Treeborn, because he's gonna, I, my hand is like Vanities, Kaya scores, something else. And then he just has Crow also. And then he also has Mind Crush. So it's just like. There's nothing you can do with that. There's just nothing I can do. And he had like a really nice play where he, he like used all his cards to armory arm my Ab Zero and crashed Kaius and Hamster into it for a game, which I thought was really impressive. Because I actually didn't even see that at first. Oh, wow, yeah. I don't know that. I, I didn't yeah. even know that Vayu played Armory Arm, to be honest with you. Yeah, you have to, because you play Raikou. Mm. You play Raikou and Plague, so if you play, like, you can, you can make it sometimes. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so... Yeah, Android is the one that they, Vayu doesn't usually play. That's the oh, usual okay. one. That's the yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had, um, we had complete opposite tournament experiences. You did great on Saturday. I got demolished on Saturday and then Sunday. Yeah, I had some crazy games on Saturday. Like, I had a game against Black Wings around five or six. Game three, where I thought I was going to lose because he opened World Winshura, but I opened Double Dust Tornado and Torrential, and I was able to, like, clear the whirlwind and come back enough, and then, like, I don't know. Like, I... I my list was meaning two deck debbies, and that was definitely positive. And I feel like I was drawing pretty well overall. Like, I was seeing, like, I wasn't drawing, like, that many values, like, together. And I was seeing, like, like, Return and Dark Arn and stuff. But, um, yeah, like, one example of how insane deck debbie is. So, like, it's the last round, like, so round seven, and it's game two. I won game one. I'm going second, and I get dust muted, and my hand is, like, Deck Devi, Vayu, Vayu, Sirocco, Sirocco, Plague Spreader. So he has a set monster, so he's going to get Deck Devi no matter what, because I have two yeah. Siroccos. I Deck Devi him. I see that he has Return and Gores, and he just doesn't get to play the entire game, and I draw all three. So I drew all three Vayus, like, just drew them, and I, I, he, he got completely destroyed just because of how insane Deck Devi was. Yeah. That card, I mean, everyone's always known that card was good. But it really seems like in the past couple months that we've seen that card really just pick up a lot. Yeah, uh, people I think are really starting a to play of it. One is that people realize that it's good against Blackwing, so it doesn't feel as like, oh, I have to. If I main this, it's just so bad against Blackwings. Yeah, and I really think that being able to chain it to a trap or something like Brain Control is so insane. Like if you just have like a like I did this on the Swiss tournament, I just had like Soraka and like a set deck Devi. I just like chain deck heavy to brain control. Like that you're just clearing brain control for the rest of the game yeah. and, and yeah. then getting the plus. Cause even if you only hit like two cards, you just get the information. Especially if you do it in the sandbox phase, you see all the back row. So like you just can't it's such an advantage for someone who like has a good understanding of the game and the sequencing because there's no possible way that if you know what the back row is that you're gonna like commit either too much or do something incorrectly yeah. and that's just a huge advantage and it's just like like also the feeling is just of you just like oh i don't 
it's like I'm kind of dodging the variance for this, these amount of turns. Where yeah, it is possible they true. can still like sack you under deck heavy if they draw like Rhoda or something, draw like Miracle Fusion or draw Dark Arm or something. But like you, you, it's it's a feeling of being in more like command of the situation, and I just think I think it's just so good. Back when I was actually trying to test Black Wings, I was I was testing out uh, one of True Heroes like primitive builds that played like Triple Vayu uh in the deck but also main deck one or two deck devies and yeah, i think blackwing usually means one I, I don't think i don't think i've ever seen blackwing main more than one yeah, TV. yeah. But i think that's that, pretty standard like, i think basically all of them main it now because that deck can do it really easily because you just use it you just use collude and then you can do it main phase two or in the battle phase yeah exactly now I, like i was noticing whenever i'd play the mirror match that card just made the mirror match so much easier like i was winning double whirlwind games because of that card yeah, because it hit the monsters like Blizzard and Gale and Kalut are the monsters that are annoying to deal with. Like, obviously, like, Sirocco is annoying if they get Sirocco Bora. But, like, without Blizzard getting the threat of Brionic or a plus one, it's just yeah, like. Shuts all that down. Yeah, and it's just. And being able to use it, like, to, like, make dupe miss timing, you can go, like, Sirocco effect, chain, chain DDV. Um,. To make do frogmas timing, which is really good. I obviously it's like annoying to play with against as like a frog player because even if you side like, like if I side out stuff like Prodigy, Junk Synchron, and Battle Fader, I still can draw like three or four guys and just lose on the spot. To DDV. Yeah, that's just like how strong it is. Yeah, and like I have to draw like Crow in order to stop you, or I have to draw like. It's just it's also just keeps your guys in the graveyard. If you go like Vayu effect summon arm wing and they go bottomless, you go chain DDV. Not only are you DDVing them, you're keeping your arm wing in the graveyard for the yeah, next Vayu. It's basically acting like like Icarus attack in some ways in Vayu. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think like especially in a tournament like which I was right about, I played I mean six of the eight matches were either against Vayu or Blackwing. I just go into every tournament thinking that forty to forty five percent of my matches are gonna be against Blackwing or, or Vayu. Just because yeah. they are Frogs have obviously gotten more popular, but I think that still more people play. I think it's reasonable that like half of the matches you're gonna play are gonna be Blackwing or Vayu if you go to a decently sized Edison tournament. Yeah, those two are a lot easier to pick up and just start playing with than frogs. I've I've recently been going back to a frog university. And I'm like, man, some of this stuff is like really We're complex. We're also going to Fish, Fish OTK University, which is slightly different and much more yeah. complicated. So. Yeah, Fish OTK um, University. Colossal that, Fighter wants that, to know um, your location. Yeah, I I personally don't care for Black Wings as a deck in terms of playing it. I just don't. I don't. I just find it too linear, and obviously it's very good. But I I prefer decks like Value, where there's a little bit more branches of decisions and also like sequencing and and just and I like frogs a lot too. Obviously, yeah. but I respect yeah. Blackwings. I believe it's just I do feel like it is also just not great for the format that DDV is so becoming such a big part of it because it is just very frustrating. You can get completely non gained by DDV in a way that not a lot of other cards, like even something like like Dust Shoot, at least you have like your other five cards. Yeah, like if DDV like, hits like two or three year cards, then it can just yeah, be over. Also, Three turns is just too much. Like it's, it's 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 just way too much. It, it really is just a card that is just. I don't know why. Like, it's just it obviously has been good because I remember people like back in the day they would play like giant orc with deck Devi or they play, um they play like zombies and they like summon Fry Koki and they deck Devi with it or summon ill blood yeah. or things like that like. People did used to play it, and they some people even main decked it. Um, but it wasn't. I just think like Sirocco is just the perfect card for it because also the thing with Sirocco is being able to set it if your opponent has a monster and they don't know it's a tribute monster. Yeah. So if you they don't know that they're gonna get decked up. Yeah. I uh, I heard of someone at the the two K tournament. I think it was the two K or maybe it was the three v three that got their Gazaras took with Goyo and then. Got deck Devi. Oh yeah, that was about the three v three. Yeah. So apparently, so Frank crazy. still won that game though. He got, yeah. Oh my god. Goyo, Gazaris was taken by Goyo, got popped too, and then he got deck Devi. 
I remember the first time that I realized that, like, if you took Gazaras with Goyo, it triggered. Then I was like, I, I didn't know that for the longest time. Yeah, sometimes it's kind of, like, not good to do that, though. Like, I've had games where I'm playing as GVs where I've chosen not to do that, because you don't want to have a monster that can attack on the next turn. Yeah. Yeah, if you do that, you need to have, like, some way to protect it. Yeah. I mean, people... Like, in any of the formats that Monster Reborn is legal, you could just, like, Reborn their Bestiari, and then, like, Goyo, the, one of their other GBs, and just guys ours them. Yeah. But, okay. Um, well, that, that yeah. kind of sums up on, on Sunday, so let's go into this last weekend, which we had a Switch tournament in Greensboro, and you, you played Vayu again. Yeah, I played Vayu. I changed a few... I, I was trying some other stuff out. I was playing um, Chaos Sorcerer, which I... I'm a known Chaos Sorcerer hater, but I just wanted to try it a bit. We had a really good turnout. Was it like 29 people or so? Yeah, that's one of the... I think that's one of the biggest ones that we've had. Yeah, it was pretty big. It was nice. Um, uh, We did play round three, so that was pretty crazy. We had a crazy match. Yeah, we had a really mm -hmm. insane match. There was a Gore's token that got honested twice in the same game. Yeah, I thought you had one honest, but like the second one was just not. I also felt like I kind of mis misplayed in game one because if I had just made Stardust and just not attacked the token, I could have at least had JD. Like, you could couldn't have been able to JD, and you had been forced to get like Chaos Horse or something. But yeah, yeah, Stardust. Yeah, you would have had Stardust with Mirror Force. Was that right? I think it was Stardust with Deep Prison or Mirror Force. Yeah, but okay, I mean, yeah. I didn't have like any other cards though. Um, cause you like, you faked me out kind of, cause you didn't treacherous me when I had dark end Greffer. And then I was like, oh, it's not treacherous because you didn't, you didn't use it in the standby phase. So I'm like, and you just, you, then you just hit my hamster and my, um, uh, Greffer, <laughs> which was like so bad for me. Yeah. Yeah. Treacherous yeah, was, was uh, treacherous was a good card. The whole yeah, you treacherous the Steinian game too, also, which was like, yeah, that little bit of like hidden synergy there. Yeah, I still, I don't know. I still think probably Mirror Force and Torrential is probably better, but I do think like the value is maybe there. I don't know. I just, I also wouldn't. I don't know about it in a deck like Lightsworn where they're already side decking Road against you. Yeah, kind of a thing I would think about, but um, I also think there's like Mirror Force is just really good with like Lumina too. Like if you don't have Necrogard now. Like treasures, they might only have one monster. You might have to pop something. Yeah, that's true. To. Um. Yeah. But yeah, game two, I was pretty lucky that I I I had like road, and then I had like I just had a lot of advantage, and you're kind of you kind of didn't really have a lot going on. Yeah, I had, I had to get a heavy game. to resolve, and you set three, yeah. and I was like, "Do you have road?" And I was like. Nah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you did. I, I'm also a Starlight Road hater, but I was siding it on uh, on Saturday. I was siding Solemn also, and I had that in my hand. I was like sitting on like Brain Control, Dark Arm Solemn in my hand, and I then eventually just had the game with Brain Control. Yeah, so I knew you had honest, but um, that's the first time I've gotten hit by um, Road in a long time, actually. Yeah, because the card's bad. There's a reason people don't play it. Yeah, people. At least in the the reason I don't like it is like one, if you're playing against someone good and it's just sitting there after like like if you set like two or three back row and then just like four or five turns and the, their attacks are going through, their so summons are going through, and that's still the back row is still there, it's kind of obvious what it is. Yeah. And like you have to draw it like at the time when they obviously it's better against in like the side deck against decks like Blackwing or whatever. Yeah. But like what if you just don't what if you draw it too late? Like it's a horrible top deck. Like I just, I'm just personally not a big fan of it. It blocks your gores as well. No, I mean I used it though. A pre pressure was blocking my gores, but I was okay with that though. Yeah, and that was. I just meant like in general, like road can block yeah. your gores if you're not careful. Yeah, that's also why I don't really like Solemn is because I value gores, and sometimes if you have, like, if you set Solemn and then you draw gores, yeah, or like really you bad. saw early, like. It gets a situation where you can't always use it, and I feel like having gores is just so... Especially if you're playing, like, two deck heavy, where you can deck heavy gores, which I've done a bunch recently. Yeah. Um, I just don't think... 
like I don't think Solemn is bad. I, I I feel like there's a lot of different varying opinion on it. Should it be played? Because I know some people say that it shouldn't be main decked, and some people are like, all right, I'll just side deck it. Like Eric is like, oh, I'll just side deck it for the non-value Blackwing matchup, and that's kind of makes sense to me because it's pretty good against a lot of the other decks, right? Like it's good against Frogs, it's good against Dragon Turbo, it's good against Amaryllis, it's good against Lightshorn. Um, but you just don't want to just lose because you just saw him something. Yeah. Like, also, basically, any deck that plays Miracle Fusion can just kill you if you saw them and they have Miracle Fusion in that turn. Yeah, that's also like, true, too. Like, I don't, I do not like Solomon and his Diva Hero for that reason because, like, okay, you saw them, then they'll just summon another guy and, like, I see you. Like, yeah, you're just dead now. Yeah, and that matchup, like, too, you never exactly know even how you're going to lose. You could just lose so many different yeah. ways. Like, can Steve a hero, like, yeah, it's kind of like AZ the same, or... like, zombies, like, I think, like, you can just, like, solemn something, but then there's, like, oh, yeah, I have return, oh, I have miracle, I have bring control. Yeah, like, yeah. Solemn is... Colossal Armory OTK. Yeah. I don't know. I personally am more on the side of it's not worth playing in a, in the main deck, and it, I, I think siding it's okay. I think I'd probably rather side solemn than road, though. If I yeah, I could see that. that. That makes sense because, like, you don't want the confliction with oppression if that ever happens. Yeah, because like, I think I was doing, I was doing like one oppression main. <laughs> Did I tell you how bad I sacked out? And I, I think you were playing right now. So game one, we were just playing the volume mirror, and round two, and my field is like armor master. I have a set hamster. I have like an armageddon knight, and I have one back row, and the one back row is the oppression, and he's and I oppression is dark armed, and oppression is terrible against volume. Yeah. But in that situation, it was, like, protected my whole field and was the reason I won. And then when I attacked his Raikou, like, a couple turns later, he popped the oppression, so I knew he had return. And I burialed his Soraka so he couldn't use return, and I killed him. Oh, nice. Yeah. I've always had this slight fear in um, Lightsworn lists that play JD that I would, like, double Gold Sark JD turn one, they would burial and put them both in my graveyard. Yeah, that's... I mean, that's not that unlikely. Like, yeah, I mean, I've never had it happen, but it could definitely I, happen. I know my friend Chris, he mind crushed double JD that was searched by Golzark on turn one. one turn Ugh. Yeah, that's scary. That's another, that card's so scary. Yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that card. I like that card. I don't know that since I've been playing Edison, I don't think I've ever been mind crushed for JD or Honest the whole time. I guess I've gotten pretty lucky by that. Yeah, I mean, like, I like it against. Lightshorn and Blackwing because like you can just force them into a bad situation where they like attack with Shura or attack with a guy and you can't use those monsters before damage them so they just they just lose their monster and they lose their Minister Clue. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Because nobody plays Book of Moon anymore because it's a little bit riskier when people played Book of Moon and like two or three Book of Moon because if you want like Shura attack Caius and you mind crush Clue, they could Book of Moon your Caius. Yeah, and then still and get the value absolutely. anyway. But like no one plays Book of Moon anymore, so it's completely safe. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. Okay, so we have a little bit of time left here. Do you want to uh, tell us about your match against Brandon Crank? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. With so, the uh, the epic ending to that game. All right, so we're both four zero. So it's mostly like this match is like sort of just determining the tiebreakers for the other people, and we're gonna both make top four because. Even though it was a lot of people, they only do top four there instead of top eight. So there were two X twos who didn't make top eight. Yep. X ones. X ones. Yeah. So game one literally takes like thirty two ish minutes, thirty ish minutes, where like I go through like I like don't draw any traps for like fifteen turns or something, but he doesn't draw whirlwind, so I'm kind of just like grinding. And he had a few really nice plays where he like he had oppression, but he like I, I use play fair to make Brianna because I have burial. And I'm going he has like three monsters. So I'm gonna Brianna the back row and then burial summon two or three value monsters and kill him. Yeah. But he held the oppression, so he oppressed my Brianna. So I couldn't oh. clear the other back row. Yeah. And then it turned even into more of a grind where like he he dust shooted me. Like he saw that I had Gores and Dark Arm, and Dark Arm was dead, and I never—I had to discard it with Greffer, I think, or I might have just had it in my hand. And like, I literally ended with like three cards left in deck, 
And I, I knew, like, one of them was Brain Control, one of them MST, and one of them was Caius. So I was feeling, like, decent, because I could at least... I eventually just did just bring control for game. And then game two, I got um, just like Whirlwind, Sirocco. He made Stardust. He had Dark Armed. He was running Dark Armed so much, like literally every game. And it's my fault because I sold him that Dark Armed that he plays, the, the ghost one. Yeah, Drawing of course, the ghost <laughs> like he, he, he lost, Like Josh lost him because he drew Dark Armed like all three games. That's so um, crazy. Yeah, yeah, that thing is super so game thick. Three, we're side decking. There's like a minute left. And this is pretty, like, so it's, it's probably going to end in a tie because they don't do, they're doing 45 minute time rules. So I like side out, like, return. I side out gores. I'm like, all right, well, I'm trying to think, like, what's the best way to do this? So I, I, I go first. I go set hamster, set roads, set heavy. And then he just goes, like, set monster, set two. And then, like, time is called at, as, as, like, I'm drawing, like, in my draw phase. And he has to ceasefire for game. That was so crazy. Uh, I, I, that I he did it in too, as just like against value, which I don't even think is that good because like I was siding out flips, worrying about deck Devi, so I side out yeah. some amount of flips. But then in that situation, it was just, I mean, it just was, that was crazy. Like that's, that's just. Yeah, totally not on the radar. I was coming. like, wait, ceasefire, the burn trap? Yeah. Yeah, that was so I mean, crazy. Yeah. I probably, I don't know. He did have Dark Arm in his hand again in that game, like when I, like he showed the rest of his hand. Yeah. So I don't know what would happened in that game, but my hand was pretty good. Like if it was a regular game that was untimed, I maybe, maybe I win still. Like yeah. maybe Boyd, you would have topped if I won. Yeah. I think if you won, I would have, I would have topped. So now I also hate Ceasefire because I also lost to Ceasefire inadvertently. Yeah, see, ceasefire, yeah. man. Fun day, I mean, fun ceasefire day. Ceasefire was like, like I remember back in the day, people just played ceasefire and this like magic cylinder, just like, oh yeah, you attack a VLS, all right, magic cylinder, you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> like very like terrible deck building. Like I want, like it made no sense. Like, at least with ceasefire, so you well. could, like, stop magician of faith or like stop like morphing jar. Yeah, I felt like I played so well. Like, after I lost to you, I was like, okay, I'm going to, like, be hyper-focused and grind. And I felt like I did not misplay at all. And I got fifth, which is so defeating. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think... I thought you played well against me also, but... You did draw a Dark Arm for game against Adam, though, didn't you, game three? Uh, JD. It was JD. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. JD, yeah. Yeah, I had to... He had, like... He had a set back row and two monsters, and I had a Garoth yeah. in my hand. I drew a recharge, and I was like, well, if I draw JD, I'm, I'm literally going to pick it up and slam it. And if he has oppression, then the game's just over, and he didn't. Yeah. So, it was like a... Yeah, then he, like, it was an moment. Like, bottomless. Like, it was yeah. Force, and like, JD blocked, and then... Yeah. Yeah, and the first JD card I picked up was Reincarnation. I'm like, well, this technically is JD, unless... But it plays into Crow. So yeah. I really... Would like to pick up JD, and it was the second card. I just like picked it up, just like flip over oppression. Yeah. How does that feel like playing Twilight, where like Crow just like hurts like more because it's just like oh yeah, reincarnation. Crow's just a plus one against reincarnation. Yeah, it hasn't. I actually don't think it hasn't happened yet. Actually, no one has you know, crowed my, my reincarnation target. Reincarnation? No, my my Lumina probably gets crowed more. Uh, which I guess is good, actually, in hindsight. Like, I'd rather that get yeah, crowed than my JD. But um, sometimes, too, I think it just comes down to, like, people want the immediate value of, off of, like, crowing yeah, you Lumina. Kinda, if you, like, you know you're playing against that deck, you kind of just have to hold crow. If yeah, like, if I play a mirror, for- like, you can summon Lumina. You know, you can get your summon like that. Unless my hand's really bad, I can't like, do it. Like, Groth, like, I, I, like, I feel the same way. Like, I just don't want... I mean, that's literally the lose condition. Yeah. It's just reincarnation. Yeah. And of course, you know, like everything's case by case. You know, if my hand can't deal yeah. with Lumina plus another guy, I guess I have to crow, but if I can, then I just yeah. I'll just wait I, for I like reincarnation or what beckoning. Do you feel or... about people side like, like I'm seeing you know this is more and more. People are just not side decking crow or they're side decking like one. And I think for like... me. Um so if you don't know, I actually went to main decking triple crow in Twilight, and I feel like I get to steal so many games because of that card. Like no you deck. You should play Avarice if you're playing Triple Crow. Yeah, play one. That's true. I definitely could. Um, 
th there's not really a single matchup where that card doesn't do something in game one. Like maybe it's not the most ideal, like hitting your blizzard target isn't the, the greatest use of crow, but I mean, it works, you know, even against like glads, like I've hit best ER, I've hit chariot yeah, before. I think that's like part of like what, you know, that like avarice frog deck that was doing really well, like in early parts of the summer. Yeah. They were really taking advantage of people not siding crow against frogs. Because yeah. Crow's actually really good against that deck because it hits Fish for it hits Avarice. And, like, it doesn't hit Salvage, but, like, technically, like, if you really need to hit, like, you could hit, like, Toad or whatever. So, like, if you have one Toad in the grave. Yeah. But, um, I don't, I just don't, I just, like, I think I was siding one Crow on Saturday, but I usually do. Like, at, on Saturday at the, at the 2K, I was siding two. Yeah. It's because I don't, I don't want to, like, Especially against like the really stupid decks like Noralis. Like I don't want to play against Noralis and have one crow. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Um That's uh, one of the problems with only playing one is like if you do play against something like Noralis, then you have to just pray that you draw your one crow. Yeah. It's also like, yeah, like sometimes it's bad to draw two, but like Crow is also just like good against GBs, and I know that I know Crow came up big for you against GBs on on Saturday. As I, yeah, I'm a big fan of siding it in frogs against GBs because the way you lose is you they chariot loop you, or you can actually hit that with Crow because it's not more yeah. monsters as that card. Yeah, I got to Crow my first chariot ever last weekend uh, at the Switch event, and I've crowed several bestiaries now, which I think is really good for me as a Lightsworn player, to no longer have to worry about Gazaras. These GB decks need to start... I mean, Adam was joking about playing Return of GB. It's like, someone, it's going to happen one time. Yeah. I saw, it could. I saw, like, I saw a guy who was, like, won, like, a, the Chicago tournament. It was just main decking Return in Black Wings. And I saw that as well. Yeah, I saw that I mean, as well. Kind of, kind of just like a cool, like random bomb. Like definitely be unexpected. If somebody did that to me in Black Wings, I would be, I would, I mean, that that could also get to like the Sirocco Pump ODK really easily because, um, like your guys are just getting bottomless. You're using value, like yeah, like, stuff with Dark Arm, Delore, D Prison, bottomless. Yeah, Kaius, like. Yeah, the Sirocco, the Sirocco Pump OTK is the stupidest thing ever, honestly. Yeah, that is really dumb when it comes up. did it on Saturday in a game I was definitely going to lose because he had Kaiku. My phone had Kaiku and a Dew Frog. So he's at 8,000. I go return. I go summon Sirocco, return. I summon back Dark End, Sirocco, Vayu, and Necrogardena. I double pump the Vayu to 7,900. Um, and I Dark End the Dew Frog. And I attack, yeah. I put him at 100. So it just literally just like he has that he he's just at like no life and I just kill him with false sign on the next turn. Yeah. And I will I lose that game if I don't return. There's no possible way I win. Yeah, I saw more returns flipped and more dads dropped at, at those events last week than I ever have ever. Like walking by the table, I saw two value players play return next to each other, and then I saw our macro guy play return, and then I saw you play return. <laughs> And I yeah, was and like, return is just what is going on? It's so crazy because you can just like black rose and pop your own guys or like synchro with Necrogardena. Like it's it's just an insane card. Like obviously it is sometimes annoying. I think I did side out a couple games, like I side out against the fairy deck I played against because he was gonna side into decree and also he's playing like triple Christia, so yeah. Um it's also just like you just steal games you would not win if it was any other card. Yeah, and there's not yeah. a lot of cards like that where it's just like, it's not even something like Dark Arm where it has to have the perfect setup condition. It's like, oh wait, here's two Sirocco's. All right, here's Plague Shredder, Necrogardena, Armageddon Knight, which I'll get the effect, and then something else. Like, it, and also the lines that it gives up, like you can go into Brionic, you can go into, you can Brionic your own monsters off return and then discard them again. Yeah, yeah, that's also really crazy. Whenever, whenever Brio comes up to like bounce your own stuff, then pitch like bounce other stuff. It's really wild. Yeah, I mean that's like my favorite thing to do in zombies is like call the haunted, where you can just like bounce your own call the haunted. Or yeah, um, it's it's really nice to do that with dark arm too. Like if you have like a dark arm Brionic play and you don't have game, you can like discard the third. You can like discard something. You can like dark arm use the effect on something, 
discard a third dark, bounce your dark arm back to your hand, and then if they kill the Brianna, you're still at three darks on the next turn. Yeah, you just immediately get to drop dark arm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're right here at the uh, hour mark, so I think that this has been pretty good. I always really enjoy talking with you about stuff like this and going over our tournament yeah. experience. Yeah, thanks for having me on, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah of course. Always a pleasure. Um, anything that you would like to say before we get out of here? Um, no, not really. Shouts to Team Hugh and Edison Club. Um, not sure what other events. Hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving and a safe Thanksgiving. And I'll probably be on some other time talking about yep. talking about um, I don't know. Yu Gi Oh history. Yu Gi Oh history. Yeah. The machine <laughs> Yeah, we'll definitely be having you back on soon. All right, All guys. Right, thank you. This is Mike from the Edison Club and Sasha signing out. Until the next one. Hamster Ryko Caius. Hamster Ryko Caius. I go check the pairings. I'm like, don't know who this guy is. Hamster Ryko Caius. Hamster Ryko Caius. 2-0 every round, man, and I ain't even trying. It's just Hamster Ryko Caius. Hamster Ryko Caius. Hamster Ryko Caius.